We don't. How's that? That probably is a little better. I turned on the mic. Uh, let's see. Saturday, and we're already up to the 11th for Trailer Gods. Appreciate you all being here. I'm with John. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. Yeah, we're very... glad to be anywhere. That's true. Uh, John had some uh, good uh, <clears throat> good uh, work today and uh, met some interesting people. Some interesting people met him and uh, fell in love with them. If he wants to say that about it or not. But anyway, uh, some nice people came in. And uh, <clears throat> he was very helpful, as always, uh, in every capacity that he has. So it's extremely uh Honor, uh, I'm honored to have him here and I'm very uh, happy that he's with us uh, for all that he can do. Just got a deluge uh, again today. The weather's just crazy, so water's coming down like just like like mad. It's, it's absolutely crazy, but we continue to uh, work, work through it. And uh, we have another week's worth of rain ahead of us here in Sacramento. So uh, anyway, we're running around doing a lot of different uh, jobs. Uh, each day, but today we definitely had uh, some customers come in and look look at some uh, some products and help them out. So that was fun. What do we have going on today for our show? And by the way, sorry, uh, we missed you the last two days. That's my fault, and it just was too challenging for me to to have it going and work every day. But that needs to be corrected because that is not an excuse. And so I will do better to make sure that uh, at least we're starting on time today, and that's good. But also to make sure that we, I have a consistent uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday show for you. So my apologies there. Uh, have some interesting um, little clips today. To we, watch, yeah. So we can comment on them. Yeah, one of them is a uh, uh, a pickup, as John calls it, which is he's exactly right. Usually he's re removing it, but in this case we didn't have to remove it. I just went and picked it up. Um, that's a Class C motorhome. And we are able to um, move that into a, a, a new uh, part of its life and uh, help out a, uh, a family uh, receive some affordable housing. So we'll let that kind of uh, play out. Um, another of our videos today is uh, it will be uh, seeing uh, the lot in some transition, the lot meaning our backyard in a transition for one of the one of the guys that's uh, security and works here, uh, his name's Jose. So you'll see some maneuvering of his uh, his home. This was uh, a year ago, but we put it into place and uh, that was a fun clip uh, that we, we saw. Um, there are some still clips of uh, some example units that we have. And they're kind of fascinating because there's a story um, not so much of where it's going, but uh, the market part of the market that it um, that it represents uh, one is a, a vintage unit and the other one is a toy hollow and both of those represent the rv market in a different way and uh, we can talk about those as we see the pictures there let's see so whew, we're still kind of really in uh, winter time here yeah but of uh, the ideal do you have inside pictures of that to show i do have uh some pictures I'm not sure if I've loaded them. We probably looked at a few, but unfortunately I wasn't uh, manipulating the photos correctly, so right. they should be shown again. Yes, that's a gorgeous trailer. The workmanship is superb in it. And uh, yeah, it's a 68 idea and it's gorgeous. Yeah, a 58. No, 58, yeah. No, yeah, it, and uh, just like one of those little old uh, cottage poster, postcard, uh, you know, vintage units that's just cute. It has the teal, baby blue, teal, and white uh, combination and the beautiful deep wood uh, colors inside. inside. And even the selling is wood matching wood all through it. You don't get workmanship like that anymore. Right. Uh, interesting about that unit is uh, the nice lady who uh, has passed, but she resided in that unit for 40 years. I don't know how many units nowadays that, you know, someone can live in for 40 years, a trailer. And this one, nope. yeah, this one was built pretty tough back in the day and uh, it still has life left. Someone could live in it again for probably another 40 years. Yes. Yeah, that's a, it's absolutely amazing. 
they just have style and class. They're all uh, uh, in a category of their own. So that would be uh, vintage units. And they call those, uh, you know, the, some other words were uh, can hams. Um, but anyway, vintage units. Is vintage what, units, yeah. yeah. What we they have are. a few of them. We do. So, wow, that's, that's fun. Our lot has a, a large variety, has a great variety of units that um, mostly needing repair. But that's more of the market to, and the the level that we work on, but those are either transitioning out uh, or into their last, uh, I should say, uh, segment of their life, and that would be just to become parts, and then they scrap out. Uh, but some are also going to be resurrected and rehabilitated by those that are interested in, um, and for instance, uh, one sold today. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's just for a few hundred dollars. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, we received parts off of it and just let it go. Um, it was a 1959. I should have got a picture. I do have pictures of it. I should have pulled it up. A 1959 uh, Field and Stream. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that unit? Yeah. I'm glad to see something go. go. <laughs> but, but we have many units and different levels of condition for different budgets that people can fit in so we can hook up with a future home. And um, Yeah, and uh, that's it. That's about, uh, oof. For the vintage units, maybe 50-50. Right, but I'm saying for mostly, the most part, the yeah. most part, yes. And then we have some units that don't need anything done to them. Mm -hmm. That are super nice but they're modern it's nice having john here because he's actually uh, rehabilitated a, a number of units himself by himself yeah uh to put on the line and and uh and provide housing uh for for persons and families uh, here yeah. in the area yeah he used to but now only this hand works right so uh his other hand is thomas yeah Thomas is his, uh, basically yeah. both hands. But. Yeah. I tell Thomas what to do, and he does it for me, and I explain how to do things, and he does it because he's my hand. Yeah. I'm his brain. And we work at do things and get things done. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's some advantages of uh, having it that way instead of one person. So, I mean, at any moment, you have two sets of eyes two sets of opinion two well, sets of experience a couple of years ago i did it all by myself i know i, I was just saying <laughs> how you, you used to knock it out just by yourself yeah um, we were actually uh not actually we were looking viewing uh, a number of videos i'm not kidding uh, hundreds in the last few hours here trying to put something together because I'm, I'm running behind and i apologize by the way uh, we switched the room around, so uh, where we were pointed last time was more towards the entrance of uh, the office. And so we switched it around, so now you'll see the setting has changed completely. But it's a little bit less, um, a, a little less, uh, well, we were getting complaints. It was too uh, chaotic in the background, so hopefully this helps a bit. And then there's more. Uh, improvement coming but we're trying to do uh, little things uh, that are in, within the budget to try to you know make make it look a little better that is uh, one thing I forgot I, I quickly lose track of thought as soon as I and another out. part of our market is the toy homes right and so we have uh, some pictures of that well let's get into the videos or some pictures what should we do first videos or should we go through uh, the toy haul and the vintage first what would you uh, let's like do the videos and we'll do the toy haul and vintage. Okay, so this was a year uh, ago when I used to uh, color my hair, but it's not a big deal. Yeah, I'll yeah. probably do it again. And this is where I am picking up uh, a unit. It's down in the uh, East Bay area. And uh, let's just see how that goes. Yeah. So we're not going to comment. We're just going to go ahead and let you watch it. And then uh it's it's just one segment that was actually an hour or so long video and we cut it down just to a few minutes of one little segment and one video clip which pretty much paraphrased a lot of what's going on i'll give you a little um just a tiny background so 
uh, this gentleman is uh, East Bay, and he had gone through the entire uh, unit with me as I got there. And so we had videotaped him going through all of uh, the specs and the history and all that. So we cut all that out. And then um, at this moment when it starts is I had just departed him and I got on the road and then I went ahead and started a camera. Up. So that gives you a little perspective of uh, how that goes. Okay, ready? So let's go with this. And where is it right here, John? What's it called? I don't know. Hold on one second. Uh, it's called this one, right? Let's see. So some, uh, again, technical difficulty. How about that? Nothing new there. Uh, let's see what, what happened here. Class C. Uh, we just got a text from one of the guys who's uh, working on one of our units out in the field, which is good. Yeah, he just said uh, one of the units is that he got working, which is great. But now I don't know what happened here. It looks like I'm going to see if I can get you through it here. Hold on. nurse or was retired now as well as being a very honorable vet from uh, first cavalry army wow just fantastic so he donated this unit and uh, it needs some work definitely has some issues uh, we've got some rot going on i'll show you while i'm driving Uh, the uh, front cap, uh, cap area. 
area, uh, is what it's called, is prone uh, to uh, uh, water damage. It is uh, very frequent that uh, water damage occurs in that area. It's the Achilles heel of uh, the Class C arc. It is uh, technically a roof area, uh, which is uh, another vulnerable point. And uh, all RVs, all RVs are uh, vulnerable and prone to uh, water damage on them. That's the Achilles heel of them as well. So nothing new. Uh, this will hopefully be a nice <coughs> solution for a person, a family who are uh, suffering and are uh, victims here of this affordable housing crisis. You back with you here. So sorry about that uh, little hiccup there. Uh, kind of par for the course. But that was uh, an interesting one. We are so alive. We had. I'm just gonna shut down a little bit of that white behind us real fast. Hold on. Um, let's see if I can get rid of that screen. There we go. I think what was interesting there is uh, what we didn't include is that that unit only had 7,000 miles on it. Actually, less than that. The engine was incredibly uh, well taken care of and very low mileage on it. And the unit itself was in really good shape, except for that front area, which I explained in the video of how uh, uh, vulnerable uh, it is. In fact... John and I and, and half the staff last night were sitting out here uh, trying to comfort uh, a nice lady named Dana. Mm -hmm. And Dana came in with a very similar unit. It's a Class C, and it has that, uh, that front area that comes in right over where you're driving. And it was all starting to rot away because of the rain. It just keeps coming in, and the, there's so much... Uh, service area that has seam and seal on it that it, as soon as uh, any of it dries up or gets weak or cracks so the water just comes right in yeah and so she was uh, very uh much uh saddened uh, almost in tears yeah almost in tears it, yeah because it it needed a couple thousand dollars worth of repair to make it right but that's putting good man after something bad. I guess not, the rate's not worth putting that much money in to make it right. And that's yeah. all the way to put it. Right. There's so much information here. It's funny. Uh, earlier in that day, she was actually waiting for John and myself here to help her. Uh, but I was at another uh, appointment earlier, which was an actual roof vent replacement uh, at, a, at someone's house uh, as a, a mobile service job that I did. And what's interesting is that I, I should have uh, brought the pictures with me today, but we're just so caught for time here. But basically, the lady calls in and says a very similar situation. Uh, water's coming through the roof, right? Uh, I paid $300 for someone to fix my roof uh, vent and... Uh, all they did was put a little tape over it. We hear this a lot. Uh, so sure enough, when I get there, we give them a quota as to what I can do the job for, and we replace the entire thing. So uh, it's not going to leak anymore for sure. But I got there, and it looked like some uh, little five-year-old cut some tape out and put it over it, and they charged this poor lady and man, uh, elderly, uh, $300 to put some tape over it. The water's pouring right through, no problem. He's got buckets set up underneath. And I just go, wow, this is crazy. Uh, so many people just uh, scalping, as they say, are really, you know, not providing any great service. So at RV Dr. George, which is where we are right here, uh, we provide a good service. So I, I went through everything. I took pictures uh, as I go. Um, I won't be able to pull those up tonight, but I'll definitely pull them up for the next show on Tuesday. And we'll revisit that because it's good to be able to show the work uh, that you do. But it's in line with the same problem. Um not necessarily they're taking advantage of for Dana, but she bought something that, that has uh, inherent leaks with it. It already had leaks, and they did a, some sort of job on trying to repair it, but the water keeps pouring through. And at that point, you're like, who do you trust to work right. on your unit, right? 
So with Dana, it's going to take thousands of dollars to fix this problem. Yeah. And, uh, with, and a week's work to do it. And um, It's not just a simple vent it, like it, I did. It's not a simple... you got to pull all of it and skin off it. Yeah. Go and replace any dry rotten wood. Which, then you got to let it dry out before you can start reassembly again. And spray for mold and all that. And it's not a small job. Right. So, uh, again, that, a few of them. <laughs> yes, you have. So, this Class C that we just saw where I put the camera up and I swept around, uh, it, it tried to visualize this. the other person who came in same yesterday. Same problem. Now, hers has a bed, has drapes, has a curtain, and it's all soggy down in that whole track where it's all rotting away. Now, the unfortunate thing is her daughter uh, likes to come and visit her, and they both go out and, and use the, the RV, but uh, a mold was starting to grow, and that's a very dangerous thing. What do you mean starting? Yeah, it's it was, been growing, and it was bad. It was about that thick, so it yeah. had hair on it and stuff. It's like, oh, you have a problem here. You Major. Wanna, you and know. her daughter had come up with breathing problems, and that could be related directly to mold. It sure can and uh, yeah. mold's not something to mess with. Yeah, uh, not everyone's affected by it. I'm not too much, but at some at some limit, though, because uh, you get enough of it, you're going to be affected by it. And I can the, smell it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So uh, we felt terrible because the best we could say is uh, she's on a very tight budget, couldn't afford the, the work to be done, and I can't afford not to pay the guys, you know, just to do it. But we said, hey, the best thing right now is just to monitor, uh, maintain it with bleach spray. Uh, somehow try to cover it as best you can. And she's getting just hammered. She's over in Napa. And they're getting as much rain as we are here for this unusually uh, wet winter. But it's just pouring through. It's pouring through. And so... And just a word of wise, too, if you do service on, on uh, units, which we do, we offer service, is you don't want to what's called buy the project, or what we also use the term, own it. And uh, once you start working on some, uh, uh, not all, but some customers feel like you're, you fixed it, so you will continually fix it uh, as it just keeps breaking down. And there has to be a fine line as to uh, providing good quality work with uh, a... Just cutting your losses. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. And just saying, hey, you know, this is what we fixed. We, did, we didn't touch anything else. We're not responsible for anything else. So you have to be kind of careful, especially with roofs, because they fail and fail and fail. And some people think that, well, we'll just keep bringing it back as long as it's failing. Uh, it's the same original problem. Maybe, maybe not, but you have to, as a service uh, writer, as a service uh, entity or, or service shop, uh, define that and go through that with the persons. And if you if you don't, you'll be surprised how many times you'll get a call back and say, oh, you know, my roof's still leaking. Okay, well, you know, when was that? How was that? Where is that? What did we do? What didn't we do? And take pictures and video along the way so you can, um, uh, you know, cover yourself. And maybe don't even do the work as it is. Because if it gets too costly, it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. Once that thing comes back once, you've already lost your profit in the deal. Most likely, if you're if you're an affordable uh, place. If you're not and you just charge a whatever, then that's up to you. But we try to make sure that we're very affordable and provide a good service. But there doesn't leave a lot of margin for air and for people to keep coming back. So it's two-way street. Give good service. Do a good job. But at the end of the day, be, protect yourself and be careful and let those persons know that uh, your customers, uh, what exactly they can and can't do. Um, because then you, you got to move forward and cut yourself off yeah. from that. Now, what is the next one? Let's go through one of the still clips. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's do the toy hauler. Okay. Okay, so John's from a toy hauler. We've had them in here before. They come in different sizes. This one's a little, it's a, in the medium size, it's about 30 feet, so maybe a little longer, but definitely not the largest. It's a pull behind or travel trailer type, which means it mounts from the back bumper area. The tongue. The tongue, yeah. 
and toy haulers. Did you tell me what do you think about toy haulers? Are they good? Yeah, they're great because you have your living quarters up front and you can tow your toys behind. Some people get them when they get two sand crawlers in or four Harleys or whatever you want. Quads, snowmobiles. Hmm. It's just unlimited what you can do with them. But you have this nice bedroom up front, bathroom, a kitchen, and then a place to have tools to, on the walls or work on your RVs and um, yep. tell whatever you need. It's just a one-stop shop. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Man, and, the, and if not to, to stay on subject, but to jump real fast, we had a micro toy hauler uh, a few weeks ago. It's 18 feet, 18 feet long? Yeah, 18 feet long. It's, it's 18 feet may sound long to you, but when you no. get into motor homes and <laughs> RVs, that's not very long. Because that's including your tongue weight. I, uh, I would call that a joke. <laughs> so if you had small bikes, if you had a little uh, ATV, you could load this thing in there, and it'd be uh, fun. If it was a one or two, a couple. You wouldn't yeah, have no yeah. room for a family. No. But what was unique about it, it had the bunkhouse. So it had the uh, pop-out hybrid in the front so that the front would lay out and then dish out with a canvas that came up on the front. So in the spring, summer, fall, uh, it was very useful of having your front space as a, as a, uh, a sleeping area. And then the back, which toy haulers have, they have these uh, fold down beds. Oh, yeah, bed, yeah. yeah, so they go up against the wall to give you your space for your ATV or quad or whatever. But if you need them at night and that stuff's parked outside, you can drop the beds down. Well, in this case, uh, it's so small that, you know, <laughs> you have to really uh, make sure that everything's out before you drop those down. But that was kind of interesting. This one here that we're going to show you has uh, a gentleman. That gave me a call, and he had let his son uh, use it because the son is uh, kind of at risk, uh, into drugs, and was not doing well. And then the son destroys the 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 unit, almost. It was in uh, disrepair and it was very bad shape. And the, uh, at that point, the father is very disappointed with the son. Uh, we get, we hear this uh, frequently. And uh, he just said, get this thing out of my yard. I want this thing out of here. When we received it, it was filled with trash and just stank and everything. Just like uh, someone who's kind of, you know, having a hard time. Uh, so we'll show some of the pictures. But this is post cleaning it out as best we could. And it still needed more. But the usability of it, if I can use that term. Uh, it's very usable and functional. So it's very functional. Thank you. That's the right word. So someone finally looked past the dirt and the filth and the rotting wall and all the taping and everything and said, uh, there's still enough for uh, me, meaning them, uh, to work with. I'm going to get this unit. So it did sit a little longer on our lot, but I went to someone right. who was actually going to use it for living in again. But uh, it had yeah. a really nice bedroom, really yeah. nice bathroom. Because yeah. Somebody took the lower cabin of the kitchen out. Uppers were still there and made the whole thing into a toy hauler. And that one bit real hard to convert it back. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, clip through some of these pictures and be quiet so you can kind of see. Again, Toilet, you're going to see some uh, some problems on the outer body shell. And then you'll uh, kind of see the, the layout inside. And toy haulers, again, are very useful. So let's uh, start with the first couple ones here. I'm pretty sure they can hear us in the background. John, did you want to say anything? So there's the there's the uh, kitchen layout, you know, traditional. Now, mind you, that's a that's actually a, quite a bit of pit of kitchen because on these areas, toy haulers, you get very limited <laughs> space for that. Yeah. 
And then this is looking as we're just sweeping around. And then that's where you're going to be parking uh, your your quad and then ATV on that dark uh, gray carpeted floor. You can see the bed area <clears throat> attached to the wall right in the middle of the picture that folds down and becomes a bed. And so that's uh, one, uh, one uh, view of it. Here's another one looking straight back uh, into the uh, back from inside the galley or inside the kitchen area looking straight out and so that whole back wall fall, falls down or folds or uh, opens up lays Lay down. down yep and then that rolled up a white tarp there is your canvas which has uh, screen so you can see through at night and daytime but it gives you the mosquito protection you need this one has a bed going across the top. Now those beds uh, retract up and down, plus they can be removed completely, which gives it a lot of versatility. That bed is basically eye level, and, and they you don't see the tracks on this, but some do have tracking, which allows it to go up and down. There would uh, sometimes be a second bed underneath it to give you a bunk uh, option. And again, there's a lot of uh, versatility on these. Uh, this one happens to be uh, set up this way, but let's look at another one. This will probably be uh, the outside here. So you can see some of the patching that's occurred and the duct taping and all kinds of broken windows. The kid unfortunately really went to town. They put in a piece of diamond plate on the front. These are things that have been, um, you know, manipulated and it probably had a generator, which looks like it was missing there. That was a generator hole. And toy haulers are going to have a generator on there. They all even have a gas fuel tank. So this is um, <clears throat> this is an average size. Let's get back to us here real fast. Uh, you know, it's a it's a basic one. It's very rough, but I think it, that person was like, I can rebuild this. I can yeah, fix it up and use it for going out right. uh, living in, but also being able to, to go out uh, if they wanted to go to the desert or something. Right. And that, that's what the purpose is. And yeah. to take along your toys to the desert. Quads. Yeah. Uh, again, a lot of people uh, are now thinking about using the toy hauler just to live in because, again, it's just space. And you can set up your own dining room or your own uh, living ar arrangement in back. You have the bed. And with the fold-down door, it's easy to get furniture in and anything big. That's true. That's absolutely true. I think of all the toy haulers, <clears throat> only one did I see uh, rotted out in the back where this, this whole uh, wall kind of drops down and comes back up. And which also, which is a testament to maybe some of the better uh, workmanship and manufacturing processes that are in place to to keep that door up. They're very heavy. Uh, they're they're what's that called offset? Uh, what's the word when you uh, when you have the springs to keep tension? Yeah, so it doesn't. Uh, the load is is balanced when you, you bring it down. It is even. Yeah. So you pull it down, it's hardly any weight. When you lift it up, it's hardly any weight because of these very strong springs that go up. On... So there's a metal door frame that goes around it, and it's usually very sturdy and very strong. And uh, because you're going to be loading and unloading uh, motorcycles, heavy motorcycles or ATVs and, and quads and what have you. This one that we just saw, the pictures in there, uh, affords space for the largest types of ATV. It holds, that was a big unit. Um, on the smaller big unit side and uh, anyway, it's uh, toy haulers are really cool. They become very popular uh, springtime And they're very popular in Southern California where you have uh, dunes out in the desert uh, And they they love this stuff um, Are one of the stores we work with closely. Go ahead. I have a friend who lives in Carmack who races jet boats and the uh, races are always down in Fresno. He loads his boat back into his toy hauler and hauls it down there. He's got a complete shop in the back for changing engines in between races and everything. And he lives in the front. 
yeah. and has this mixer to make him mix drinks. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's look at uh, one more. Actually, let's just go ahead and go into the vintage. Okay. So now we're going to be looking at another unit that is, uh, this one is vintage. It's kind of a, a dual. Um, you know, you can have a vintage unit and still use it for everyday use. True. And you don't have to have it all fixed up like everyone else. You can just have a regular older unit. Actually, there are societies of those that do that. Really? Yeah, a vintage unit to different brands. They all had their cap outs and yeah, yeah. So it gives you both. I mean, you could just say no. They call it like a daily driver. You could have something that you're using, whether to live in, vacation. Um, you know, the the spare room out back, and it could be real cute and everything. But you're not really over the top, the the glamping and all of that. Uh, so that gives you a lot of. Uh, leeway so this unit that we're going to be looking at is a uh, silver street and it falls into vintage uh, yeah it falls into vintage it's a larger unit you don't necessarily want to tow these things around to the beach rallies and the, and the club meetings and all they're usually smaller trailers so this one most likely is going to uh, be parked at a park or in someone's backyard and kind of stay it just as you approach 30 feet you really don't want to be hauling around a seven thousand eight thousand pound trailer uh you know unless you got a big truck that's true yeah and, so, and these trucks nowadays it's just becoming crazy let's look at uh let's go through the pictures on this and again we'll be able to talk uh, yeah. while they're watching it there okay so this is a silver street okay so let's look this one up Let's see, let me get my glasses on real fast. Okay, so we want to go with silver one. Here we go. Okay. So it's a little banged up. What do you think, John? Yeah. You remember that one. It's fixable. It is. I mean, this is, they use incredible products. So this is like a matte brushed aluminum. It's lightweight. Mm -hmm. Look at that uh, cover over the front window. Yeah. Beautiful. And those are actually covers right in front of you over that big crease on the corner there. I wish I had a picture. Like There's the, green windows on the, the inside. gold cover. Yeah. Cover shell in the front. Yep. And then the man door in the middle has a, a separate uh, cutout, which is really cool. Uh, so there's some really interesting features on these silver streaks. Mm -hmm. um, looks like Mick is getting back to us. So let me go to the next picture here. Now this is looking inside. This has more of a resident, because it's a large trailer, it affords a little more space and has more of like a residential. Plus it's old and they definitely looked more like a, re a home. Right. They look like a residential home inside. Right. So you, you, as you, if you can see that toilet is elevated, it goes up on a, on a, on a lift or a perch or a, it's higher. And the reason is for your storage tanks underneath. And the reason for that is because in the old days, these trailers were very low to the ground. And so in order to have some capacity and holding capability underneath, uh, one reason is they lifted it up. Plus, you have to have either a sweep if uh, you needed to reposition that that thing yeah. it wasn't exactly underneath it there's many reasons why they lift that that up but then when you lift it up too high you have to shorten the toilet yeah <laughs> so there's always like a little okay this one's kind of uh, it's not too rough there's actually it's got great bones it's got a lot of potential and someone kind of went in and whitewashed it so here's another picture here this is right, this is a very large bathroom look how big that bathroom is yeah for a trailer you have cabinet space. You have a nice sink and countertop. Oh, my gosh. That's huge. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking at the... Yeah, I see it. Yeah, we're looking at the sink right there. Yeah. And then now we're going to come over to this one here. So now that's the bathroom in back. We're looking at the large bed. And now someone came in and put a sheet of plywood down. That's a full sheet. So that's fine. It's a 4 by 8 sheet. And they just planked it right over, uh, plopped it right over... You can see a little bit of the other bed that would have maybe been over on the 
the left side as well. So you would have had a right and left mm -hmm. uh, side bed there. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. It's a bench, but it looks like that could have been a bed if a slide out top that came out a little bit with legs. I would agree. Yeah. And it has, uh, but just a ton of potential in here. This is, uh, I would take that plywood thing out and kind of make it a little bit more roomy in there. Get that out of there. The white is interesting. Here's another picture here. We're just backing up. So we're backing up through this. So the, on the left side is your entrance. You see a heater, a wall heater. And I, I like that rounded roof, similar to the Airstream. Yeah. So, uh, Uh, what do you think, John? Yeah, okay, that's, that's great. Let's look at this one here. Well, now we're in the wow. kitchen. That's not bad. No, it's not at all. Yeah. So uh, this is called a chateau. Uh, it might be a chateau. I can't really tell, but it, it kind of looks like it could be on your, on your uh, oven there. So that's an above oven, lower stove top. Uh, arrangement and you know typical uh has the hood up top and uh nice 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 so you have counter space and then now we're we turned around you can see the green window there's one but there would be in each corner now those outside uh, covers come off and so you if you close everything up you get this incredible green hue that comes through just spectacular because the light actually passes through that and it's plastic, very old plastic. It came that way. It's just amazing. Um, so that would be your living area right there that we're looking at. And then we're going to go one more here uh, to the other corner of, uh, of that. And that would be, uh, John was calling. I didn't see that he called, but just now he called. Anyway, that's the part I was on. All right. So what do you think? Gorgeous. It has huge potential, and I would love to restore it to factory. <laughs> I, seriously, there's so many of these units that come in that, that John and I just we fall in love with because, like, oh, I want to restore that one. I want to. You need infinite space and time. We have a lot of materials, and we can get the the parts. And he has expertise, and it's like, oh, we could do that. We could do that, but. Yeah, at some point you're just like I, I, I can't, you know, no time and no space. But there are some. We get a very few, very very cool units that come in. Uh, we don't deal with vintage too much, but occasionally we get access to them. Whereas some of the the uh, operations and companies in the area that we deal with specifically, and they deal specifically, excuse me, with the vintage. Uh, we always see the stuff they have, and it's just over the top. It's so cool. But sometimes, uh, you know, we yeah. get we get a lead onto something and maybe get a good deal or get to pick it up. But it will always usually be a little rough. Yeah. Um, I just mainly do repair on things so we can sell them. But yeah. uh, we yeah. get that little tread out there that we want to restore. Yeah, we should. Uh, you're talking about the aristocrat. Yeah. The when they got loose for four grand. The little low liner? Yeah. Yeah. This one, I think, is maybe like six inches off the ground. Yeah. It's, it's super low. And uh, your your ceiling height is less than six feet. It's like five foot something inside. It's yeah. only 10 feet long. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's very sought after. It's a, it's, a, it's a 63 or a 65, and it's a cutie. So we we've talked a bit about uh, going to rallies and all before on one of my, one of the shows, but I guess if we had to finally have an entry or uh, have one, why not fix one that's tiny so we don't have to spend three years fixing it up? But it's cute. Um, sometimes tiny is harder than doing a big project. Mm -hmm. Cause a big one, you know. We'd, do a, a lot. It shows a lot. With tiny ones, you do a lot. Then show. Then show. And then you have to make all the stuff that would normally be four foot long. Now everything's just yeah. six inches long and all these turns. I haven't seen the inside, but it's all in there. Yeah, it has an unusual layout, which uh, is not really to my liking, but it, it 
it works. It is what it is. The cabinetry is a. Uh, it's really interesting how many little tiny cabinets they put in. It's like a. a it's like a little dollhouse. Or something. I'll show you. It's it's weird. Pretty neat how they do it. Little little cabinets. Like you're thinking, how did that happen? But uh, it came that way. Uh, yeah. Are they functional? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One spice rack. One's just okay. for little uh, things. There's no bathroom in it. Obviously, uh, obviously feet. not. We're not gonna put one in. Yeah. So moving ahead, we're gonna keep to our one hour mark. So we have about ten minutes left before we have to end tonight, and we're having a. We're just trying to get a, a smooth format for you so that we can show you some great stuff, and be able not to have too many glitches, and be able to not have too many hiccups. And so again, your patience and your um, understanding is just hugely. Uh, uh, appreciated remember to i've been told that i have a bell uh icon on which means that uh, you're not able to subscribe to this because it's uh, not for kids so i have to adjust that my son told me that i'm going to give him a big shout out to my son uh and i i'll get back to that in a moment but uh, we have lots of people uh, watching that we appreciate everyone i haven't had a chance to get to any chats but we lost a couple of views here since I was off for a couple of days, and I apologize. But if you can subscribe and like and uh, share, we sincerely appreciate that. Of course, we have a lot of upgrades coming and and uh, revisions and modifications that I learned slowly. This last video that we're going to watch is kind of on, uh, about uh, what we're doing on the yard at any moment. Uh, we always have a lot of activity out back. This one happens to be Jose okay. trying to put a newer unit that he upgraded uh, into its spot. Thread the needle. That's exactly right. So he got rid of the old one, and so now he's going to be putting in the new one. Okay, should we watch this? This will yeah. be funny. <laughs> I think it was Mike that helped him uh, put that in. So here we go. Senor, you're gonna have to work one side. I tell you, tell me, I tell him, okay? You got plenty of room on my side, Mike. Okay, now straighten it up, straight. You got four inches here. When he means okay, I mean stop. He's about ready to tag the... Okay. okay, hold that right there. Hold that right there. Hold on. The good thing is my air conditioner will move in. Come by way about two inches. No, no, keep going forward, but just kick it over. All right, go backwards a little bit. Kick your rear end towards my side. Okay. So come back a little bit. Now can I go back? Hold on. Now kick your rear end over that. Okay, now straight, now straight. Keep that, that line in there. Literally have one inch. You're one inch on there. Oh, you got plenty of room here. Just go straight. Just go straight. You're fine. He's okay. You got seriously one inch here. Just go easy. He's okay, Jose. Good day for me to come down and hey, check out your plate. Are you, are you living down there? I'm there every morning. Not so hard, Mike. Not so hard. Keep it straight. Down there every morning. 
so I didn't use it until the hour. So I usually leave it about that about 9, 10, 10, 11, but call me, I'll make it work. Okay. Oh my goodness. Look at that, it's like a half inch. Michael, turn uh, your, your back end. Make the back end go this way. Yeah, good, you got it. For that one guy? Straighten it up, Mike, straight. Huh? Probably. How badly do you need one? So, what do you think about that one? You call it, John called it threading the needle. Yeah. Would you, would, I think I would concur. Yeah. That was one tight fit. But okay. it went straight in. He did the right moves. When he's on the fork, it moves just right to go straight back without hitting either side. He was a good operator. Yeah, the thing is, is to keep calm and keep cool on that. Yeah. And uh, so... I jumped in and said, no, 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 I'm going to be your eyes on this. I don't want to take a chance on it. Now, Mike's unit was on the, uh, as you were with perspective of, of, of the viewer's perspective, would be on the right side. And, um, but we don't want to hit anything, you know, you just don't want to. And so pushing a one inch tolerance on each side at one moment there was less than one inch. It was yeah. about a half uh, is really, you know. It's just it's just too close, but we, we do what we gotta do, and uh, it's funny if you do this enough. You know what? It's like a, a seasoned driver. They're like, mm -hmm. it will fit. I can just tell you have this ability, uh, yeah. a bus driver, whatever. They like this is it will fit, and it may be very close. And sometimes we get within. I'm not kidding, a quarter, a half an inch that you have to go. But if you go slowly, and uh, everyone is uh, gelling, you know your eyes, and then the operator not overcorrecting and everyone is is verse and experience it you can get these things in uh forklift is just mandatory when you're working with these types of uh, uh maneuvers you can't be using a truck or anything you have to have forklift or of uh, the hand actually the little hand the uh, uh, motorized hand do, but yeah but for our forklifts much better than anything right and uh, of course it's going to give you the ample strength that you need if it's a if it's a decent one but that and, was fun and maneuverability when you need it you just cut half inch here make go half inch over there and just keep going back right so i think if you if you're like no we're making progress it is gonna you know you kind of understand like oh eventually it's gonna fit so jose has now been in that trailer for a little while and he is uh, enjoying it um he has a little problem with the slide out, and so uh, it needs to be fixed. But and he has a problem with the roof on it, so that needs to be fixed too. But he has a brace inside there, I saw, and so that keeps the water uh, going. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, these these rigs, you know, if you spend a lot, uh, or if you wait a while and and just uh, look, you can get good deals. Uh, Mike had one; he had a slide out on his, and uh, he just waited. And picked it up, but that was the unit that he drove by in order to get her right. back. Uh, his dad, I think, found it for him. It was a 30 foot unit for just a couple hundred dollars and had a big slide out, had plenty of room. So if you just look and wait and um, be patient, you'd be surprised at what you're going to find. But you got to always be looking out there. Yeah. And which is nice because, you know, we get a lot of inventory here. And people have been looking. It's so often I hear them say, I've been looking and looking and looking. And then I came to your place, you know, and, and you had one. Or I can't believe you had one. Right. And besides that, we have any part they need to repair on it. We have the parts here for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, first and foremost, that's what we have here is parts, uh, used parts. Uh, and uh, you're not going to find that. Uh, hardly at all throughout the United States, and we have a lot of used parts. Millions. 
Yeah. Yeah, come on down and help us organize again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. So uh, I just looked outside. It's still, it was, it's getting dark now. Mm -hmm. But when we started the show, it was still light outside. So I need to get someone, John and whomever, to be able to boost the signal here, and we can run mobile outside. I mean, we can do the show for us 15 minutes or whatever, uh, you know, doing something else if we want. Yeah. Uh, the the winter is starting to wane, so we're excited that we'll be able to get uh, get get some good outside uh, shots. But I'm telling you, the the wind and the cold and the uh, rain uh, I'm not going out until that's over and another life I used to build Wi-Fi extenders yeah but I can't remember how I built them no and my memory's going John you know can you take a, a pill you know it's just <laughs> can you do another I pill I got more than most people know well, that's true. I'll give you that. You're a very uh, knowledgeable man. You know, you can't see right now, but we have the general right behind the camera. He's here for a little visit, which is nice. And uh, if I touch the camera, I'm going to lose the whole thing. So. All right. I'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, a good place would be in the corner of the warehouse to put the Wi-Fi booster. Oh. Uh, if we go right to the corner right here on Selma by the middle gate, I think uh, John Dreyer has a hole cut for his cameras. Uh -huh. We can mount it like right. We can just go stick our hand right outside and mount it right out there. No, 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 don't, 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 don't. No, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so but but think that through. Yeah. Well, no, I'm serious. I want to get. I want to be able to get this boosting. Okay. Well, we need to have Thomas go up over there anyway to mount another camera. How's your I'll back, by the way? It's very, very sore right now. The general hurt his back. Uh, he yeah, was yeah. laid out for a little while. Yeah, I was laid out for and about now, a week solid. And now he's picking up Scott. Uh, uh, John. <laughs> <laughs> I got to help John get in and out of bed and in and out of the truck. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit sore, but I'm working through it, and it's okay. Because John's worth it. Yeah, Scott, uh, the general here has had been and can you tell us your experience you were in the uh... um i was a certified nursing assistant for 16 years wow i got my certification through a program that was uh they don't usually have programs in skilled nursing homes anymore but it i did it mine at uh folsom convalescent hospital uh over in folsom california back in 1996. Oh, back in the day and uh yeah, so I did that for a long time and worked in acute care hospitals as well as skilled nursing and um, pulled muscles and hurt my back quite a bit, but, you know, I'm still rocking and rolling. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, now I'm doing, I'm, I'm back to, to the roots, helping out John here, you know. And it's good because, uh, you know, he's a very important part to our operation here. And... Um, we need him here to guide Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> well, well said. Uh, yeah, everyone's important here. The general, uh, uh, John, and, and uh, Jose, and, and Thomas, and Mick. Uh, Mick's over. He just uh, he, uh, texted me uh, looking at that 73 GMC. So he's trying to get it running. So, oh, GMC, that's way too much. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, uh, one of the guys is is working on. Okay, everyone watch that movie Stripes, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they use uh, the GMC. It only was made for a few years. Uh, they called it the urban assault vehicle. Remember? Uh, it's seventy three. Well, this one is seventy three. You know what that means? What? Tell me. No smog. Oh, that sure is. Hey, oh, we just lost signal. It means it's forty nine years old. We should have left. <laughs> <laughs> they were made a year after I was born. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just lost the signal. We're we're on a quite a bit of a delay, probably about two three minutes. I just lost signal. So hold on, that's terrible. Not sure why. Get out the video of that sign. Oh yeah, I tried to pin it to. I've been trying all day long. I gotta get with uh, Charlie. 
Charlie's Angels? Yeah, she knows how to do all this video stuff and sending them and stuff. Yeah, okay, so hold on. We might have actually been able to get it back up. Oh, we're out. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we got it back up so fast. Uh -huh. so, well, well, let's what let's actually get going and sign off and figure out what our technical problems were. So we didn't miss anything. Uh, we pretty much shut up as soon as the the, the video stopped. But, yeah. But we'll see you again on Tuesday. Not me. Why? I'm not coming in Tuesday. Is it raining? I don't know. I have an appointment. What's your appointment? I don't know, but one between one and four. It sounds kind of uh, <laughs> mysterious. I don't know. The guy called me and says I have a fight between one and four. I don't know what about, but. What do you mean? Just some guy called you randomly and said, hey, yeah. you got to come over here? Yeah, he might be that's... having a hatchet waiting for you or something. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. So one to four means, is it out? Is it out? No, it's in, in my house. In, oh. in call. He's coming into your place. He's coming into my place between okay. one and four, four, and I don't know why. Probably one. for your electric wheelchair. Oh. Uh, or something like that. I don't know. You could take that over to the house if you want. Take what? what? Like, will it fit through all the doors? Yeah, but it won't fit in any cars. No. Can't waste too much. Oh, no one can get there. We just have to uh, get one yeah, go down the ramp. Yeah, one of those ramps. Uh, ALS has one, just need to be picked up. Okay, well, give me the address and I'll go pick it up. For All right, here we are, just a, 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 like old men uh, yakking yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, please try to uh, share us, like us, and, um, and uh, what's the other one? Subscribe to yes. us. Yeah. Uh, and ring the bell. <laughs> yes. So, my son told me. Uh, Tag, I love you. Uh, told me, hey, I, uh, yeah, I'm not ringing the bell, or I, it's, it's not able to be rung, something like that. So I have to fix oh. that. All right, so he's. I have mine open. It yeah. does. It's a bell to alert when your show comes on. Okay, yeah, I have to figure get, it out. Get some t tutelage here, so tutorial, uh, work, and then I'll be good. All right, see you uh, Tuesday. We'll check in with you and find out what happened. Right, mm -hmm. be nice. Maybe right. you could text a, a call. A video call. call. We yeah. do a video call. Can you do okay, that? Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, guys. We love having you here. Thanks for uh, being uh, faithful and showing up, uh, whoever's out there. Have a great week. <laughs> All right.